Walt Gaston from Trout Unlimited. Glad to be here with you today. Glad you, uh, to have you with me. It's uh, Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Friday's always a good day. We're gl glad to see that. And uh, we're, we're glad to have an awesome guest today. We've, we've got my good friend, Mr. Chris Dodders from Caddis Fly Shop in Eugene, Oregon. He is right on it here. Ask Chris to join us here in just a second. Once again, Chris Daughters from the Caddis Fly Angling Shop in Eugene, Oregon. We're connecting and hoping that we'll see his smiling face here in just a moment. Um, looking forward to, to talking with Chris about fishing in the PNW, specifically the Willamette Valley and uh, that part of Western Oregon. We're excited about that. Still connecting here. Hopefully we'll... We'll get you uh, hooked up with us here, Chris. If not, just uh, try again, and we'll we'll give it another shot. Okay, uh, we're still trying to connect, and um, again, starting to get towards Thanksgiving week. Hope everybody's got m much to be thankful for. We certainly do around here, uh, and we're grateful for the opportunity to talk with you today. Uh, says Chris is not able to join right now. Chris, give it another try, buddy. Uh, we'll uh, we'll hang out and wait for you. Um, lots to talk with with Chris about today. First, just about Eugene. Uh, for a proud son of the Sagebrush Sea here in in southern Wyoming, that's an incredibly beautiful landscape and what a river, the Willamette. Uh, multiple awesome rivers in in, in that area. Uh, Chris will tell you that that he grew up fishing at the Mackenzie, and uh, uh, these are these are epic and indeed iconic rivers, uh, American rivers at their at their best in Western Oregon. Uh, we're excited about that. Uh, Chris, give us another shot. Try to get us uh, get you hooked in here. We'll keep on looking for you. There he is. Hold up, hold up. We're going to try again. We're going to go live with Caddis Fly Shop. We're waiting for Caddis Fly Shop right now. We're connecting. There he is. There you go. Sorry. Hey, no worries. I was worries. outside, Walt. Glad to see I you, buddy. Work. How you doing? Yeah, good to see you. I got. I didn't want to hold this thing up all day, so I was just kind of outside setting it down. But let's you, you just you, you just put it wherever you want. And, all right. And, Wait a minute. Wait a minute, man. There's palm trees in the background. Hey, man. It's Oregon. It's kind of wet. Whoa. I, I missed those palm trees the last time I was in Eugene, buddy. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's looking pretty good, though. I'm here to tell you. Very consistent where I am. Yes. So let me, uh, let me just do, by, by way of introduction, now... I, I was just telling all our all our our friends who've joined us here, and you've got, man, you've got you've got a pile of friends joining you here, Chris. Is there any way you can get in the light just a little better? You're a dark outline to us. The light seems to be mostly behind you. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that'll do. Yeah, that's perfect. I had it as your okay. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Um, I was just telling these guys. You know, I haven't spent a lot of time in Eugene. But for a guy who comes from the middle of the Sagebrush Sea out here in southern Wyoming, um, man, I was just struck by what a beautiful, what a verdant and 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 just gorgeous landscape and watershed that is. Tell us a little bit about the Willamette River Valley there, where you guys are. I mean, Eugene, wonderfully located, kind of in between the Mackenzie and Willamette, with the Willamette kind of running. Um, from the south and the Mackenzie of due east. So we we have a uh, you know fisheries that go up seventy miles up toward the Cascades and all the way down right in town. Um, it's so we're really well positioned. But Eugene's a great college town. Uh, well it seems like uh, maybe not growing as fast as some people want, but growing just fine. 160,000. Uh, add Springfield in uh -huh. hundred thousand people and uh -huh. uh, a lot of professionals move there to you know, hunt, fish, hike, bike. It's all right there. It's all very, very close to Eugene. And, yeah. And that's, that's the beauty of the Willamette Valley, really, is the proximity. I mean, I talk to 
people from Portland all the time are like, where can I go catch a trout not far away? Yeah. And, right, you know, two hours to the north, and it's just harder. Yeah. You got it right. Yeah. Yeah. I was really struck like by how big a, a role, you know, fishing and other forms of outdoor recreation seem to play, not just in, in, in the, I guess, the lifestyle of a Eugenian, but but also in in the local economy. I mean, that's outdoor recreation is a huge deal in, in Eugene, man. It is, and uh, you know, I think the university capitalizes on that. The Tra Travel Link County, which is a, a nice organization, it really involves a lot of local business. Um, and you know, you can't drive over any distance without driving over a river. Yeah. In the Eugene area, and yeah. it's, uh, we're really really lucky. And you're right, it, it's involved. I mean, you know, you the football, you know, not big this year, but it's big normally in Eugene. And you know, you walk over, uh, you walk over Summer Steelhead to get to the to the stadium. How cool is that? Wow. Yeah, yeah. That the, the, that's a marvelous story. Well, that sort of sets the stage then to talk about the shop, I suppose. You know, the your shop is not a Johnny come lately on the scene here. This shop has been around for a while, right? It has. Uh, Bob and Kathy Gard started the shop in uh, 1975. And it was a great little store at that time, you know, in, the, in an early industry at that time. Really, fly fishing wasn't big on the West Coast. The Kaufman right. brothers were good. Um, Bob and Kathy had a, had a great store, and I bought it from them in 1996. Um, it's been in different locations in the downtown Eugene area just one for me but all kind of uh fifth sixth avenue down uh kind of in downtown uh -huh. um it's uh, just been so good to me my entire life you know I, I started working there when I was about 12 um really in the I, same shop you, you've been work, yeah. working in that shop since you were 12 yeah oh yeah. man <laughs> back and uh you know we did I I laugh about this all the time because it's sort of come all around, you know, with one of the real advancements in fly fishing to me is fly tying and all yeah. the synthetic that have developed. But, you know, when I got started, uh, Bob Gard had just purchased the Fly Fisher's bookcase, which was a book and fly tying yeah. outfit. I don't even remember it. I was, was like 12, but we had like 20 by 20 boxes of marabou, of mallard, of saddles. You know, we get all this stuff from India, grade all these feathers, just garbage compared to what we have now. But <laughs> job i mean you know keep the moths away with stuff and and now you know fly tying has always been really important to the caddis fly it was at that time you know it was 30 right. years ago and it remains today one of our biggest and most uh, important aspects of the business so and it, yeah it was, it's hilarious i mean i would we go in a no window no ventilation room and pour big buckets of bulk cement into little glass jars i mean that's what was going on then you know <laughs> it was great that's a that's a great story and and as it's evolved, I mean, you guys, you guys are doing trips all over the place. I mean, you know, worldwide, like, uh, yeah, there's we tried to, yeah, that we're not, we're not in the class of some of the big travel agents, but we work with some of them. And, um, you know, that, that led to us buying a fishing lodge in New Zealand in 2013. So that was, you know, and we continue to do trips around. We, we bought and sold that since, but that was an incredible experience as well. Wow. What a what an experience! Now you know, <clears throat> as the business grew, uh, and one thing I I, I want to remind our listeners of here, if the, if there's anybody out there who's um, harbors some sort of, of of idea that you know the fly fishing world is somehow dominated by these you know giant. Um, super um, multinationals and that sort of thing. I, I, I'm going to suggest that we can look at it from another way. And I'm going to use uh, Chris's shop, shop as, a, as an example. This is a shop, family-owned shop. Chris and his wife, Shauna, and their kids, this is their shop. This, is, this isn't a shop that's owned by some group of investors, uh, hedge fund traders in, in, in another country. This is their this is their family shop, and it's my observation, Chris, and I want to check this out with you. That that's really a strength for us in the fly fishing industry. What do you think? Oh, I agree, hundred percent. I mean, you have uh, a group that if you're if you're still around 
in retail, and I think we can move this beyond fly fishing slightly, but fly fishing yeah. is a love and that, you know, isn't going to get you rich, but it, if you're still in retail and specifically retail fly fishing, you know, I think you are dedicated. Um, and I know most are independently owned and operated and just like the, uh, anywhere, you know, you get up, you work hard, you, you try to keep it going uh, every single day, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a bit of yeah. times, but if you, if you love it, I, I, I do see it as a strength for sure. Yeah. I mean, and the, get involved, uh, which I know you're going to move to from, uh, a small family business is, is, uh, you know, you're a little more nimble actually. Yeah. In many respects. That's true. My yeah. kids have experienced real life financial, um, lessons, whether they know it or not in their 13 yeah. and 16. Yeah. So yeah, tell, real, tell us this bit. about this year, Chris, one of the things that, that we saw, you know, as, as the whole COVID thing began to come down back in the spring, man, there was, there were some rough times. There were supply chain problems. There were, uh, I think, I think if I remember correctly, you and I talked back in there sometime, uh, you know, some places were shut down, others weren't. What was the experience like for you guys there in Eugene? Well, I think that Oregon in general until recently um, was pretty well off. However, we did, we were asked to close as a non-essential business. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, our local traffic could pick up, you know, orders that they placed online and pick up. Mm -hmm. I would say that low, but it happened. But the the fascinating thing, and I know this this happened with many businesses. I, I think of beading, quilting, um, yeah. things like that that you could do at home. Yeah. You know, the flight absolutely insane. Yeah. It was it was like overwhelming for us, and as you said, supply chain, but in a good way. Yeah. Uh, so we closed the doors, and team took care of the team inside the store you know they went home and they went to work yeah did a fantastic job uh but it was nothing but good okay and then and now it develops it comes out of out of that and i think that trout Unlimited has, has undoubtedly seen this as well but i mean we have more participants suddenly in fly tying in in march april but but then anglers as well as the yeah. summer develops or anglers getting into it hey i can't go on my big family trip to Europe, let's, let's do some stuff. Let's get into fly fishing. Uh, or I can't, you know, I, I'm going to go to the Colorado to check out the Canyon Grand Canyon. Let's, let's go fly fishing or whatever. Yeah. You know, each person. Has yeah. Them. Yeah. Lots yeah. of different businesses remarked on the same thing that, that yeah. this is, and, and you know, I'm, uh, my, my good friend and boss, Kirk, Kirk Dieter said, you know, this has the potential to change the, the face of fly fishing forever. And, yeah, we have more. Yeah, no question. And I and I don't. I mean, supply chain, U.S. manufacturing is still not fixed. Right. I mean, there's still. Uh, we're a small industry, and it's not. It's not easy for the manufacturers to keep up with demand. And I, and you know that goes across the board because they may have been you know zapped of nine foot five weights and they stopped building nine foot seven weights for yeah. two months. Yeah. You know? Really, more complicated than it than it. And I, so the bicycle industry is exactly the same. You okay. know, my buddy that across the street from the shop, right. it's incredible, incredible how many people wanted to buy a bicycle. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I've, right. I've heard the same thing. So let, let's, let's turn it from the mechanics of the, 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 the fly fishing world to just a little bit to, to what gets us all, you know, on the water in, in the beginning and keeps us there. And, and that's, that, that's the, the drug of the tug and uh how how did you come did, were you working in the shop before you started fly fishing or how did that how did that whole roll out no my father and i took a fly fishing class from the caddis fly really when I was about you and your dad yeah and the and they, so both got into it at the same time the his the shop has a history that we continue today with owen our latest employee of hiring young men or women who want to get into the sport who are in high school that was me. Today it's Owen. We yep. continued throughout. Um, took the fly fishing class. Wanted uh, a job after school, so you know, started with the bagging hooks. You know, we we only had hundred packs of hooks then, or a thousand. <laughs> you into the feathers, and then head cement, and then tying flies. Yeah. You know, healthcare cat is six dollars a dozen. I was I was making some real money. Wow. You know, 
so we were we would walk from school or get dropped off from school uh to the shop and you know if i wasn't getting paid i was just hanging out learning from all the guys sure uh, they were fantastic throughout so that's uh my dad quickly realized that um on the mckenzie uh, river our local one of our local mckenzie and willamette local rivers you know a drift boat home of the drift boat oh, yeah the, the mckenzie boat yeah you need a you generally a boat's a real advantage on the Mackenzie. It's not an absolute, but it's a real advantage. He quickly realized when you're rolling, you're not casting. Ooh, that is a point. Kick me in the back. So now I'm rowing, you know, and, and that that's why I started guiding before I could drive, because I was always really? rowing the boat for <laughs> and I still love rowing today. It's a fantastic I I you know, the team effort of fishing the Mackenzie boatman and angler is still wonderful. Yeah. That's that, that's a wonderful symbiosis. The so the, let let's let's take that a little bit deeper. For for a newbie like me fishing Western Oregon, if what would if I asked you to 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 give me a a perfect day of fishing somewhere in in the the Eugene area, what would that look like? What time of year? What would we be fishing for? What would we be fishing? to catch whatever we're fishing for. Tell us a little bit about that. What's a perfect day? Oh, the perfect day. Uh, well, a lot of, like, but our season's long, so I'll, I'll drill down. Okay. Because okay, it is long. It is starting February with March Browns and ends in October, November with October Caddis. Nice long trout season. So we really do have that. Yeah. But let's go to the, I can catch it on the upper Mackenzie. And I'm talking about the uh, way up Paradise Campground, Mackenzie Bridge area. 50 miles east of town okay uh if i can catch a green dray catch there in late june you know i'm gonna see all the big fish i'm gonna they're all gonna be up on the top and mm. you know all you're gonna need is a five weight and you're gonna have a great day oh that's just a, a great hatch period where we've got kind of those late spring rains but it's still warm and you've got the the big hatches you have everything going on then you've got green drakes which is what we're you know kind of really aiming for but you got big golden bmd status you got, it's all going on then so that that window june 15th july 4th you some wonderful fishing there yeah we got we got a comment here i don't know if you can see the the comments scrolling up on your your screen there chris but we, we got one from travels with kyle bull trout on the metolius yeah, so we, we we and the Metolius has a really healthy population of bull trout. Really, Mackenzie, they're protected on the Mackenzie. Okay. We're not on the target them, um, but the Metolius just you know another forty minutes east or less so from that upper zone. Uh, yeah, they have a nice population of, of fish in the main stem Metolius. Wow, that's a bucket list item for me. I got I got to be you know I got I got to tell you two two bucket list items. I've never caught a steelhead. And I've never caught a bull trout. We can probably take care of that in the same day out here. Oh, oh, you're killing me, brother. You're killing me here. <laughs> so when we, oh, that's awesome. Uh, see bull trout, we see them, uh, especially in that period I was just talking about, kind of that May to July period. We see them eat our mid-sized trout. I'm not talking three, four-incher. I'm talking he wants a 12-incher. And this is a bull trout in the 30-inch range. And all of a sudden things aren't going anywhere when you've got that 12 inch trout on because a bull trout's got on, got, is, has eaten. And occasionally we do catch them, you know, incidentally. Not, and Metolius, you can target them, Mackenzie can. But. Wow. I, I have a friend who, who told me about catching a West Slope in one, Western Montana one, one time, you know, just kind of a medium size, like you say, 12, 12 inch West Slope. And, and he's, he's, you know, he's bringing this fish in and then all of a sudden the shadow just emerges and engulfs yep. this fish and it's, and it's like you say it's a, it's like a 28 or 30 inch bull trout up that just captivates me i gotta tell you that that is a captivating image to me what They're about a cool fish oh yeah what about steelhead tell me about catching steelhead well i mean in our in our area mackenzie and willamette have hatchery runs of steel uh -huh. you know i the further to the south the uh, has both hatchery and wild steelhead. Sure. Uh, of course, at the Rogue, um, the the Mackenzie, the fish are generally released Lieber Dam. They've generally returned in, in a really close proximity, so that mm -hmm. fishery 
busy from Lieberg Dam to Greenwood Drive, the first three miles or so of the dam down. It's mm -hmm. about 30 miles. Uh, the Willamette is really, uh, to me, an interesting fishery, a better swing fishery. The water is not, uh, um, you know, it's, it's broader runs, uh, greener water, not crystal clear like the Mackenzie. And so you get a better better swing. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, seems like the fish spread out as well. So I like that. Our mutual friend, uh, Mr. Kyle Smith has joined us there. Cascadia provides. Shout Good. out to Kyle Smith. Glad to see you there, buddy. We also have a question. Is that Chris Daughters uh, from Two, Two Rivers Fly Fishing? Yes, it is indeed. I somebody ask that because I'm so dark. Or <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's talk about steelhead for just a minute, Chris. You have, you have kids and, and, and I'm wondering, um, what do you think? What, what do you see the future being for wild steelhead in, in Oregon? Oh, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see them protected on the areas where we have uh, a, ch a chance, you know, in the, on the Umpqua, on the Rogue. Um, I, I think the Mackenzie Willamette are tough wild steelhead rivers. I mean, I, I think yeah. the Willamette Falls was probably a significant obstacle for those fish historically uh, from a geological sense in the midsummer. They, the run would have been different, you know, it wouldn't have been the same, what we think of as a Deschutes run of wild steelhead yeah. in the summer. Yeah. But, little bit different locally sure um, sure uh, but hey the, the truth is from a fly shop owner perspective the, the if we just think you know activity and ang angler interest steelhead are really on the high bucket list wall they, they are they are one of the things oh. that we're, we're talking about a lot and and we're very excited about the uh, the possibilities we see coming down the line is the removal of the lower four dams on the on the snake and, yeah. and and also of course we got got some stuff going on on the Klamath and 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 whatnot, but I you know I'm old obviously I'm I'm 67 years old, but I haven't lost my optimism about those sorts of things, Chris. I think I think your kids are going to have the opportunity to fish for wild steelhead in more places than you and I have the opportunity to fish for wild steelhead. We'll see. Oh, I agree. I mean, we have we have some pretty unnecessary dams in the Willamette Valley, and yet we still have fish yeah. that manage to get up and down. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they do get some help from ODFW, but the there there remains some runs. I mean, I to my my conservation focus, if I'm if I have to decide an anadromous fish specifically, although I I mm -hmm. focus more locally, but we have a wild spring chinook run on the Mackenzie that really you know, could, could grow. Okay. The yep. habitat is there in that upper yeah. river. That's a pretty awesome fish too. It's not a great fly rod fairly, but it, it's value for the watershed is immense. And you know, I'd like to, I want to see those you to grow and, and be protected. I'm, I, I, I'm hopeful. I, I really, really am. We've seen, we've seen conservation success stories like that before. And I think we can continue to make those, but, Absolutely. <laughs> and once again, this is, this is for both of us here. I think that, that where people make the connection, sure, they make it through, you know, you know connection through their local um, TU chapter or, or wherever, but the faces and the relationships that, that connect them to those watersheds happen in shops just like yours, Chris. Your shop specifically, I would say because of the role that you've taken in building a, a, a fly fishing conservation community right there in Eugene. Yeah, we have a good one. It's, it's been great. And um, I've got a shout out. I don't know if Matt Stansbury is around, but if someday if he watches it, he, Matt was great instigating uh, a creation of Oregon Fly Fishing blog. He and I started that in 2008. Yeah. And that's uh, helpful getting that message out throughout and organizing uh, from, from little things to to bigger things. And I, I was kind of thinking about before we got on this call about how uh, fly shop and again, I'll go back to just small retailers might feel overwhelmed uh, often sure. as a bit I have in my career and then add children to that and guiding and all, all of all of the stuff that life has and that everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and sometimes you want to do more 
you want to do anything, you want to do something, you have all those feelings and you know, you just, you got to just stay with your ears open and you will find that opportunity to help yeah. get it. And, you know, I kind of used to think, oh, well, when I am doing less, I'll be able to uh, participate more. But, you know, that isn't the case because you, you are always going to be doing a lot and you just have to jump in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's mostly just a matter of jump in and swim. Um, the yes. opportunities will come to you. Just jump in and swim. And I, I guess that's a, that's a pitch I'd make to, to everybody out there. Maybe you're a TU member, maybe you're not. Uh, but, but jump in. We can yep. use you no matter who you are, where you are. We've got an opportunity here for Chris's kids, for my kids, for my grandkids uh, to make things better. Not, not just on the Willamette, not just in the PNW, but, but nationwide. Um, and uh, it's shops just like, like Chris's shop, the Caddis Fly Angling shop, that can provide the key to getting you involved in some of those things. So um, let, let's go back just a little bit. Uh, Chris, we talked a little bit about the future of conservation. What do you see happening that, that excites you in the, in the fly fishing industry? What, what, what's lighting you up? Uh, right now when it comes to the industry? Well, I think participation, uh, whether it be COVID or otherwise, <laughs> is a really exciting thing. I know Kirk has written about that, but yeah. the, you know, when we had to uh, hunker down, if you will, or stay yeah. close to yeah. uh, your water uh, or just get outside, that made people value what they have outside. Mm -hmm. And my hope, but what excites me is that everyone at whatever age they got out there val you know places greater value on the out of the outside their local river their yeah. local trout yeah you know, yeah i mean that that gets me excited about what's going on i mean i think as a fly shop and a you know a, 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 a epicenter for help to getting into whatever it might be conservation or fishing which is what a fly shop is sure um you know we need to provide information, uh, complete sharing. Uh, I'm, I am into sharing, which I believe then uh, gives the information to make you successful, which means you're going to care, which yeah. means you're with the conservation program, yeah. you're going to make it last. Yeah. Fishery much. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, that, that, that kind of uh, analysis of your local closer waters and hopefully valuing that more yeah. uh, is, a, is a fantastic thing going on in fishing right now. Yeah. All over. Are you, are you seeing more? Um, well, let's see. One of the things I noticed was I was, I saw more women on the water this year than ever before. Now, and I don't think that's just a function of there being more people on the water. I think there was, there was a substantial growth in, in participation by women this year. And I don't know if you saw that or not. Um, I mean, I, I think it's been growing. I, 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 not, not stuck out of me huge, but uh, you know, I think there's also more women being professional anglers, yeah. you know, making a living yeah. or being or guiding or whatever, and that's great. I mean, I think we have a local fly fishing uh, women's fly fishing group that has met at the shop for mm -hmm. you know plus years, and yeah. um, I think you know I, it's difficult for some women to just go out on their own. It's not like guys, you know, they have a hard time. I mean, they you know, just going by themselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I think the more women can get together and go out in pairs or whatever and participate is fantastic. And it is happening. Um, I think the gear thing has gotten better. You know, oh, somehow. definitely. Yeah. More stuff for women and that's, that's helping. Yeah, I agree. And, and as you say, there's, there's plenty of, there's plenty of folks out there, you know, uh, in, in the industry itself, um, who, uh, women calm influencers if you will um who who are who are preaching that gospel and not not just talking the talk but walking the walk and and i appreciate that that's a good that's a good thing you know we're we're as inevitably happens with these things i feel like we've been talking for like you know 94 seconds or something like that and we're already running up against the the back end of it a little bit let's let's take it back to to your kids, Chris, your kids are, are younger. And 
I'm, I'm curious, what, what do you want it to be like for them? What, what, what is, what's the, what's the fishing experience? What's the life experience that you want for them there in Eugene? Um, well, I'd love, I'd love for them to, to, to continue to see, you know, the cold, clear, beautiful, and, you know, uh, and unpolluted drinking water, fishing water of the Muhammad Valley to be to remain the same. Yeah. That's no doubt. I have, a, I have another suspicion that uh, their generation is going to be faced with making um, some progress <laughs> in fixing what uh, has been, uh, you know, some damage that's been going on for a long time. So yeah. I want them affect change and be recognized for it. And, and uh, I want their generation or, my, or my, my children specifically to know that they can get active and make something. I think that they will. I think that's what they're faced with. Yeah. Uh, it's, hard. it's a hard one um, for them. Um, we've, we've been incredibly fortunate as a family to travel around and uh, see some really intact ecosystems that influence them tremendously. They value them that tremendously. Yeah. Um, so I want them to, to gain. I want them to gain ground. Yeah. I want them to have a river than I fished. Well said, Dad. Well, very, very well said. Uh, as, as, as we tie this up, let, let me just once again express my thanks to you, Chris, for taking time to, to do this today, but also to, to, to thank you for all you've done uh, for fish and for fishing for the uh, red sides uh, chapter there in, in, in Eugene for uh, for all you've done personally for conservation and and for and for the for the fly fishing industry my hat my hat's off to you buddy You're uh, my thank well you. done thank you. thank you for joining us my friend thank you for taking time out of your day you're you're the best man Keep up. The well, thank you, Paul. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm happy that I'm not in the Mackenzie where it's blown out today. Yeah. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for a mountain bike ride in the desert later. Everything's gonna go. be fine. I've, I've been checking in with the guys all day today. They're doing fine. Okay. So well, we'll continue to work from afar. So you, just, just so as you know, we got, we got the final comment here. Okay. Final comment okay. of the day, Chris, from uh, some guy named Smith. <laughs> Two of the most well-traveled anglers on the planet already. I, I I don't know if that's you and me or 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 what, but that's you, Cash and Patsy, my children. There you go. There you go. Yeah, Two, yeah that's what that, that's where he's headed. Well, I, I yeah. think little Jack is probably uh, going to be pretty well-traveled angler too. So there, I would agree. I would thank agree. You, Chris, you're 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 Thanks, the best, Walt. man. All right. Have a great yeah. day. Okay. Bye bye. Chris Daughters, is he great or what? I just love that guy. So we, uh, again, uh, express appreciation for everybody who's been been there um, today. Uh, thanks for all your comments. We got a special deal coming up I want to tell you about. On Wednesday next week, okay, that's going to be our Thanksgiving holiday shopping special here on Instagram Live. We're going to talk a little bit about the importance of fly fishing related businesses and the customers that support those fly fishing related businesses. Uh, once again, uh, call it the uh, Black Friday two days early or whatever you choose to call it, but we'll be here. Same time, same station on next Wednesday. Everybody have a great weekend. Tight lines. You guys are awesome. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.